I know uh, other generations learn more um, and know more about their community um, the longer that seniors stay in that setting. So I think it's, it's important uh, to put in place policies that allow seniors uh, to make those decisions and not just have the decisions uh, driven by uh, their own financial situation, uh, but rather by uh, what uh, is in the best interest of them and how uh, they uh, would like to receive those services. When you, you talked about um, keeping seniors in the community and, and how much we can learn from them, I know that for many of the councils on aging, that's one of the programs that, that they're involved in is, is that, um, that the bridges type programs yep. with, with the, the school children and, 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 the, and the seniors. And I know that you're a very strong advocate of the councils on aging. Mm -hmm. uh, could you talk a little bit about what, what your view is regarding the role of the councils? Well, I think, um, you know, again, as you look at a large district like mine, I think one of the challenges and one of the concerns always I have is about isolation. Right. Um, and I think that's a concern uh, no matter the age, um, no matter uh, sort of where people fall on the economic spectrum, but it's especially a concern for seniors. You know, we mentioned uh, access to public transit right. before. And when you think about the councils on aging, I think they really serve as the hub from which a lot of those services can be delivered to seniors and a convening point for seniors. Um, so that while you may want to live in the home uh, that your family has had for several generations, you also know that you can get together uh, with friends, with people in similar uh, situation and have that real feel of, of a community. Um, not that you don't have that in your own home, but you aren't able to access it as much as you get up there in years. So I think uh, the councils on aging are, are critical parts um, of uh, the services we provide to seniors in that they uh, can not only do outreach, but also can bring seniors together. Um, and make sure that they know that they aren't the only people in the same situation um, that they're in and that, uh, and that there should be a place for them to come together. Yeah, and I think that's hitting the, the nail right, right on the head that the, the COAs do offer so many opportunities for socialization. Of mm -hmm. course, Elder Services prepares the lunches at, at the senior centers and it's a great way for people to get together and uh, reconnect or meet, mm -hmm. meet friends for the, the, first, the first time. Uh, ben, what, what are your thoughts regarding senior housing? Uh, as you, you know, Elder Services has, has developed down in Lee, Crossway Village, which is senior mm -hmm. housing with, with enriched services. We're currently converting the final part of the school, the Hyde Building, into additional units. Mm -hmm. We've applied up to Clarksburg with, with the town of Clarksburg, hoping to get some uh, HUD 202 money up yep. there to, to, to do the same thing. Do you see this as, as, as a need throughout your your, uh, your district, all, all three counties, particularly when we're talking the, the smaller, mm -hmm. more rural areas to, uh, to try to develop more senior housing? Yeah, absolutely. Um, I have, um, I've been actually surprised by the amount of communities uh, that are talking about creative um, reuses of old buildings, um, especially for senior housing, and how many of the small communities in my district have highlighted uh, the need to develop uh, more options for senior housing as a real critical need within their communities. Um, I can think of off the top of my head, uh, Ashfield, Conway, Clarksburg. Um, I've uh, been to and visited uh, the Crossway Villages project in Lee, which is a great project, and others. Um, and I think, again, it's, it gets back to the point we were talking about with home and community-based services. We're talking about options uh, that are being made available uh, for seniors. So either if they want to stay uh, in their home, uh, they can. If they want to move into a setting, again, with more of a community feel to it, they can as well. Um, so I think it's about options, and I think absolutely it's a need. I think we're very lucky to have uh, Congressman Olver um, in his position as the uh, chair of the Appropriations Committee that controls HUD's budget. And I know the 202 program uh, for senior housing funded by the federal government is a real priority of his and one that he's tried to work on in his tenure there. And, and I know he knows it's a real need in Western Mass as well. And, and I, I, I agree. I, I think, you know, when we were talking with the, the, the residents of Clarksburg as we were putting together our application, and one of the things we heard time and time again is they didn't want to have to move down to the city, <laughs> meaning North Adams. Right. They wanted to stay right in Clarksburg as, as well they, they should be able to. And mm -hmm. I think all these, these small towns, you know, that have the, those, these classic buildings yep. that are, you know, in, in, in they're not being used, uh, but they're great buildings that if we could just find a way to convert more of them and, and then help people to be able to stay in their own communities. Even if they can no longer stay in their own home, at least they can stay in their community and mm -hmm. they'll be close to their friends and their families. And it's just, a, I think it's a, it's a win, win situation. Absolutely. 
So let's talk about the budget as we're talking about win-win situations. Right. Uh, elder, elder service line items have been cut the last couple of years. Mm -hmm. um, we were cut in the governor's budget last year and before that the 9C cuts. We were very pleased that the governor's budget for this year, which um, he submitted to the legislature in January, basically level funded elder line items at their already reduced levels. Uh, as that budget has come out or is coming out of the, the house, it looks like the house is going to, to do the same, to keep them at their, their current levels. What do you think we can expect in the Senate? Uh, I think the hope would be to do something very similar mm -hmm. to what both the governor and the house have done which I know even level funding is not uh, in and of itself uh, really level funding, that there are built-in costs uh, that go up, whether it's utilities, healthcare, or others. Um, so it, even level funding makes things difficult. Uh, but in a climate like this, uh, level funding uh, truly is a win and represents uh, the legislature's and the Patrick administration's commitment uh, to elder services. We have uh, faced over the past couple of budget cycles um, an unprecedented decline in revenues. And uh, a decline in revenues means a decline in the ability of, uh, of the legislature and of the administration to appropriate funds for the programs that we talked about uh, before, Meals on Wheels, Councils on Aging, all of those. Um, and that has forced us to have to make difficult decisions. Uh, thankfully, we had a rainy day account that we were able to call on that we had over $2 billion in. Uh, thanks to that, we've, had, we've been able to avoid uh, even deeper cuts into core services. Um, we uh, took the step of raising uh, the state sales tax by no means a popular decision or one that right. any of us took lightly, uh, but one that we felt was important to be able to continue uh, to provide services and avoid what would have been incredibly dramatic and deep cuts uh, without that funding. Um, so the budget picture moving forward um, is better uh, moving forward than it is looking back in the sense that revenues have continued uh, to tick up month to month and be above the benchmark projections that we've set. Um, now it is a slow increase that we have seen after a precipitous decline, um, which will be difficult um, uh, for us to work our way um, back to where we were before. The other thing uh, that is sort of hanging over everyone's head is the fact that we have had uh, a great deal of assistance from the federal right. government uh, to get through this. Um, built into this year's budget is over a billion dollars in assistance from the federal government that we do not know um, what to expect from in coming years. We do not know if part of it will be there, all of it, none of it. Um, so we have, um, we have managed our way through uh, the crisis for the most part, and that management has been um, largely um, looked upon favorably by bonding and rating agencies, um, which uh, sounds uh, boring but is incredibly yeah. important. Uh, when it comes to making capital investments in the Commonwealth. So whether that's building a science center at MCLA or repairing the Hadley overpacks or fixing uh, the mall road, all of those uh, projects put people to work and improve our infrastructure. Um, so there is, it, it has not been an easy process, uh, but it is one I think the, the administration deserves credit for managing well. Um, and hopefully uh, we have uh, made our way through the worst of it. Um, and we'll be able to build on and make those investments in, in critical services that we all support. Yeah. I, I think that while perhaps it, it may be boring to some, you know, I think it's, it's inc incredibly important, and, and I think the legislature and the governor deserve an awful lot of credit for an awful lot of things. I, I th I'm glad you mentioned the increase in, in the sales tax last year because I, I shudder to think where we all would be mm -hmm. without that. Well, and it's, Im it's important to point out, too, this year on the ballot, uh, there will be uh, two ballot initiatives uh, that would um, uh, cut uh, tax increases uh, that were put in place last year. Now, no one likes tax increases in any way, shape, or form, um, but um, we have certain services that as a commonwealth we have decided uh, to provide. And uh, it isn't as if um, times get tough and we then say, all right, those aren't important anymore. Do we make cuts? Yes. Do we find ways to do things differently? Absolutely. Uh, but uh, somewhere there is a kid who's in second grade, and they only get second grade once. Um, so we shouldn't say, well, you'll get a little bit worse second grade. There'll be a couple more kids in the class, because you just happen to be born at a time at such where you had to be in second grade uh, yeah. during a recession. Uh, there's a senior who's dependent on Meals on Wheels, and we can't say, well, that's not coming now. You happened uh, to be dependent on Meals on Wheels on a time when, hey, times got tough, so sorry. 
Now, do we all have to find ways to make government work more effectively and efficiently and provide those services in the best way possible for taxpayers? Absolutely. Uh, but we